Let there be no doubt. If it moves, you can be sure it's a beast. And even if it doesn't, well, don't take any chances. <laughs> Your first playthrough of any Souls game is always going to be that one you remember. The traps are more surprising, the enemies are more intimidating, and if you're playing on release, then there aren't any guides that you can call upon to help you. Sometimes I find myself wishing that I could wipe my memory clean just to play these games for the first time again, and I'm sure a lot of you guys would like that too. Well, with Bloodborne, Miyazaki says he wants to extend that feeling you get when you play for the first time. He wants there to be this experience that's different every single time you attempt it, and to achieve this goal, he's introducing a dungeon in the game called the Chalice Dungeon. Now the Chalice Dungeon is procedurally generated. Essentially what this means is that every time a player enters the dungeon, the dungeon creates itself, with different rooms, different traps, different enemies, different enemy placement, different rewards, you get the idea. What you're seeing on screen now is an example of this dungeon. Miyazaki stresses that this dungeon, the one you're seeing, was made specifically for the presentation, and that the actual dungeon will be much larger and much more complex, spanning the entire underground of Yharnam. So what do we know so far? Well, first, the Chalice Dungeon is optional, and not essential to the main game experience. This is important, really important in my opinion, Souls games are tightly crafted, with a lot of thought put into their design. While a procedurally generated dungeon will be an amazing late game experience for replayability, procedurally generated dungeons kind of fly in the face of the tightly designed Souls experience that we know and love. It goes against the core of Souls, and I'm glad it's an optional thing. Secondly, the Chalice Dungeon is a multi-layered, underground labyrinth. There will be three layers that present different surprises and traps related to that layer. Uh, so far we've seen a swamp layer and a crypt layer, so I think that those are the layers they're referring to. Perhaps there's a third layer we haven't seen yet. Activating this switch will allow you to break the seal and access another section. Here, for example, we see the character finding the seal and gaining access to the next section, which is a boss room. And according to Miyazaki, even the bosses will be randomized. Third, the dungeon is going to be very difficult and huge. Therefore, a core theme is sharing this experience with others. Miyazaki stresses that you will be able to share your dungeon with other players, but also within small communities. And this makes me think that your own specific dungeon will have this code that can be shared with other players so they can copy it, which would be awesome. I have this vision of sharing my dungeon with you guys, and having you all share your best dungeons with me. Imagine that. But what we don't know are specifics. Which elements of the dungeon are randomized? Are there hundreds of preset rooms with preset enemies? Or are there preset rooms with randomized enemies? Or is every single element of the room randomized down to the rocks and the grass? We don't know the extent to which the dungeons are procedurally generated yet, and we'll just have to wait and see. But secondly, we don't know how exactly to reset the dungeon, or whether it's even possible to generate a new one for your character. Some articles imply that every character will have their own fixed dungeons, and some imply that the dungeon will be different every single time you enter. Moving on to multiplayer, I have a bit more information for you guys. A lot of co-op scenes were shown in these trailers, and one was against this ancient guard dog clad in flame, and one against a boss named Priest Gascoigne. From what I've seen, it seems like a pretty good idea to have a companion in these fights, because these fights are incredibly fast-paced, to the point where I worry if it's even fair. You're definitely fighting for your life, like Miyazaki said you would be. Back to multiplayer though, the only new thing we've learned is that there will be player versus player combat in some form. Miyazaki specifically says that he wants to bring more encounters where we aid the boss in some way, similar to the old monk fight in Demon Souls or the Mirror Knight fight in Dark Souls 2. Personally, I think that we will be fighting other hunters, but I also have this feeling that we're going to be playing against other hunters while they're in some sort of beast form since it was confirmed by Gascoigne in the trailer that a hunter can turn into a beast either when he's threatened or when he's lost all hope. Who knows if he can even turn back after turning into a beast. 
Miyazaki also confirmed that there will be a mechanic similar to the human form, hollow form, that we saw in the Souls series, so I wouldn't be surprised if this turned into human form or beast form in Bloodborne. So what else was shown? Well, you can see most of it in the trailers, but let me recap for you. We see two new weapons, one is a cane that can extend into a metallic whip, while the other is a flamethrower that takes our gun slot. We see Priest Gascoigne as a boss fight, where before he helped us fighting against the beasts. The other boss fight is this flame-clad ancient guard dog, which attacks by barking flame at you. Both of these boss fights are frantic and intense, just like the Cleric Beast boss fight was. They're saying that Bloodborne doesn't have this huge focus on difficulty, but from what I've played, it definitely feels harder than the Souls games were. It's also worth mentioning that the game has been postponed and will now be released on the 25th of March. You might think this is a bad thing, but honestly I feel like it's a good sign. Too much these days we see games coming out that are rushed, with some promise that it'll be patched later. If a game's being delayed, it's because they want more time to polish it and I'm all for that. To quote Miyamoto, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. And I want to end this video on something that's important to me, and honestly, it's one of the main reasons I made this news video. I want to bring your attention to this. Throughout this video, and others, you've been hearing music made by an incredibly talented guy named Alex Rowe. Alex has this uncanny ability to take the tone and theme of an existing piece of soundtrack, and he remixes it in a way that makes it sound completely different, but at the same time, it's also the same as what it was before. He remade a bunch of the Dark Souls soundtrack songs, and most notably, he's composed an entire album inspired by Bloodborne. It's called Born in Blood, and you should totally go and listen to it. Go and load up his music while you're doing some work or browsing the web or something. You won't regret it. We're really lucky as a community to have him composing for us, so go and show him some love. Links are down in the description. As usual, thanks for watching guys. We actually have a new story video coming next week, so get hyped for that. If you enjoyed the last one on Sir Alon, then you're gonna enjoy this one. It's very similar to the last one in terms of production quality, so yeah. Feel free to subscribe if you're looking for more Souls news, and I'll catch you next time.